By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome at another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are starting something special because we are starting a series of tournament magic from the Raging Bull series. Now, RBS is a tournament that's usually not held online, but due to circumstances, the tournament was held last month in June completely online, and it was streamed live right here on uh, Timmy Talks. Now, we have 10 hours of live footage, and what I've done, I've downloaded that, and I've chopped it up, trying to find the games for you. So this is going to be a full report. Every week I will post uh, a game from the Raging Bull series, starting with round one, and we have a very interesting match to start with, and that is Elephant Graveyard, a deck uh, made by Edo, who is going to take on Ervin, and he's playing with Arabian Aggro. So, really cool decks. I have the deck picture, so we're first going to do a little bit of deck tech where I show the picture, uh, the decks, discuss a little bit about it, and then we'll go straight to the games themselves. So, this is game one, round one of Raging Bull series. Enjoy! And here we see the deck of Edo, and isn't this thing a beauty? I mean, Edo, for me, you're already the winner coming up with such a cool deck. Bring it to the tournament. Uh, as you can see, it's playing uh, with a full playset of Elephant Graveyards. That is what this deck is named after. If you're not familiar with the card, it's a land from Arabian Nights. You can tap it for one colorless mana, or you can tap it to regenerate target elephant or mammoth. And as you can see, he's playing with a full playset of war elephants there, the white 2-2 creature banning and trample from the Arabian Nights expansion, and with a full playset of war mammoths, of course, the ABU classic 3-3 trampler. Um, and of course, he wants to then just put giant groves on him, um, use, his, use berserks, deal a lot of damage, and of course, he's also playing with uh, four Nevenerals discs, because he can explode the disc and then regenerate his elephants and mammoths so they survive, right? So it's kind of an elephant disco deck as well. For some ramp, he's using Lanawar Elves. For some card draw, he's using uh, Sylvan Library. Of course, Balance, always a strong card and kind of an auto-include when you're playing with white. Talking about auto-includes, we see Disenchants, we see Swords. I actually also like the inclusion of Armageddon, like when you're in a situation where you're ahead on board, you can actually use your disc, regenerate your elephants or war mammoths, and after that play, when everything's gone, also play an Armageddon, and then there's nothing left on the table except for your elephants and mammoths. I'm personally really hoping to see that play here, but, Edo, I don't want to, you know, bring bad news, but you're up to a very competitive deck. Uh, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent of Ervin's Arabian Aggro. And here we see Ervin's deck, the Arabian Aggro deck. And as you can see, there are three colors in the deck, blue, uh, red, and green. And um, you can already see why it's called Arabian Aggro. He's playing Kurt Apes. He's playing um, Surrender Pafrits. Um, he's playing Urnum Jins. So, you know, he's got those very strong Arabian Knight creatures in this deck. Interesting to see here, and that's probably because, or probably because that is because of the meta we're playing. He's playing with four Argovian Pixies as well. So obviously Argovian Pixies is just great to deal with those very annoying Mishra's Factories. That, by the way, Erwin, you're playing as well a full playset off. So um, he's also playing with two Ice Storms. I think that can be uh, decisive. You need to take care of those Maze of Ifs, you know, and I think Ice Storm is a great answer for that. Um, let's see, what else do we have in this deck? Of course, three Crumbles. I'm, I'm sure one of the things he's worried about, I would be worried about with this deck, is um, City in a Bottle. City in a Bottle is just huge, and it's for just two mana, it's an artifact, and it says discard everything from the Arabian Knight expansion, and you cannot play out anything from the Arabian Knight's expansion. So as soon as that hits the board, it's going to destroy all the Arabian Knight cards that are in play, so that can be a huge problem um, for Erwin, of course, in this tournament. So that's probably why he's playing three uh, Crumble mains, and even if he's not facing uh, City in a Bottle, by the way, there are just so many artifacts that crumble so, yeah, I would play with Crumbles too. It, it makes sense. Um, then we see a pretty heavy burn package as well. We see uh, a Disintegrate, of course, to finish in late game. We see uh, three uh, Psionic Blasts, uh, fantastic instant removal from blue. And uh, we see four Lightning Bolts. So, if he manages to get a little bit of damage in with his very powerful creatures, then he can use his direct damage to finish the job. But what I find interesting here is that he's not playing with Berserks. That is something that you usually see, and he's not playing with Giant Grove. So instead, he's really chosen to, to have these, I guess, 
uh, double tactic of, you know, I've got my creatures to deal damage, but I don't want to go full on board on my creature power. So I'm also going for a really heavy direct damage package. And then when we look at the sideboard, we see something special as well. Here we see two juggernauts and uh, four Suchis. So of course he could, he could bring those in to replace some of his Arabian Knight uh, creatures when he is faced with a city in a bottle. So maybe that's why there are these six creatures in his sideboard. Maybe Aaron, when you're watching this video, you can let us know. And uh, the nice thing about playing with blue and with red, of course, is that you have access to red Elemental Blast and blue Elemental Blast in your sideboard. Another interesting inclusion here are the two black vices in the sideboard. Um, so I'm curious to see what that is for and when he would board it in. Also that one extra island is probably when he is... Um, faced with is that for a blood moon that you have that extra island it's again an interesting thing where i'm not sure why it's in there so aaron if you're watching this video because i you know he's a good magic player so he has his reasons so please let me know i think it's for for when you're faced with um i said bad moon didn't i, I mean blood moon when you're faced with the blood moon um let's take a look we also see the blue power of course ancestral recall time walk time twister very strong cards. If you have them, it's almost an auto include for most people when brewing. When I look at this deck as a whole, I see a very competitive deck. I think this is one of the contenders that might make it into uh, the top 16 today. But okay, we're f first things first, we're in round one. You will first have to face the Elephant Graveyard deck from Edo. But for me, this deck is a favorite uh, to win today, to win this match at least. Not today, but to win this matchup. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's go to game one. Game number one is about to start. We have Edo on the left with his Elephant Graveyard deck versus Ermin on the right with Arabian Aggro taking a zip of the Heineken beer. And uh, let's take a look. It, I think it's Edo on the player. Look at that Black Lotus playing a Savannah and there is a War Elephant. Oh, that's an exciting opening. 2-2 Bander with Trample. From the Arabian Nights expansion and how cool is this and look at that tropical island into a soul ring that's a pretty good start for Ervin as well let's see what Edo can do playing a disenchant on the soul ring this is a pretty good answer here from Edo trying to slow Ervin down bringing in two damage there Ervin dropping to 18 and there's a mox ruby that means he's got three mana will we see a surrender per free tier that's exactly what's happening. A 3-4 flying the powerhouse from Arabian Nights. And let's see what Edo can do that. Um, Loa is not really going to help him at Library of Alexandria in this case because he only, only has two cards in hand still. There's a Taiga here from Ervin and an attack. Three damage here. Edo going to 17. And there's a Sylvan Library. So, so far, very powerful cards here. And a Time Walk. Ooh. That means he can deal some extra damage. Uh, we see Ervin there dropping to 16 from his own Surrender Befreed. But, of course, he also has that Sylvan. It looks like he's going to take four damage or not. No, just picking one card up. And going for three. So, that means Edo drops here to 14. And what else is Erwin going to do here? He's just passing turn. And Edo looking at his cards, playing another Savannah. And deciding to attack in a band, I think. That's pretty cool, seeing a bander. And there is a Psyblast, probably going to take care of the War Elephant here. And then he can animate his Mishra's Factory to kill the Lanora else. And I think that's exactly what, what is happening here. I don't think he can actually pump it because he just summoned it. But okay. Oh, look at this from Edo. A Nevenural's Disc. Maybe that can save him out of this tight spot that he's in. Let's see if Erwin can find a Crumble. If not, we will see a very nice activation from the Nevenural's Disc next turn. And I mean, Edo, he's still on 14. If he can get the Nevenerals disc to activate, it's not that bad. And we now see Aaron th uh, think, shall I commit to the board? Or what do I need to do? Or do I need to wait until Edo has used up his Nevenerals disc? First, he's attacking here and playing three. I'm not really sure. Oh, there's a Wheel of Fortune here. 
from Ervin. That is a risky play. He's hoping to find a crumble, probably, to take care of that Nevenerals disc. But if this is not working out, he's just given 807 new cards and, of course, a disc activation. And he's not, he hasn't found the crumble, so that means an untap here for Edo. He can use the disc, or is he going to wait with using the disc? He also has that Library of Alexandria, of course, which is now relevant again after that Wheel of Fortune. So that wheel was a big, big risk by Erwin, and it looks like it's going to backfire on him. What is Edo going to do here? First activating his Library, of course, drawing card number 8. Looking at a full hand, a full grip all of a sudden. And look at that. He's not using the Nev Nevenerals disc. He's not using it. He's actually playing a War Mammoth. This is completely unexpected. Aaron dropping to 12 because of his own surrender per free, but I really did not see this coming. Edo is on 11. I mean, Edo is now taking a big risk as well because it looks like he cannot activate the Nevenerals disc. Is this a misplay or is there a bigger plan behind this. We don't know what's in his hand, of course. And I know Edo is a very experienced player, so I'm sure he has a plan. Dropping to 8 here. And it looks like there's still no crumble from Erwin, because I'm sure he would have played it out if he had it. Playing a Kurt Ape here, which is 2-3 because of the Tropical Islands and the Taigas. He actually has a lot of nice jungle to choose from this Kurt Ape. Passing turn here now. What is Edo going to do? Dropping, I believe that is an elephant graveyard, so he wants to regenerate his war mammoth. And now he's blowing it up. And then he's going to regenerate the war mammoth. Beautiful play. This is exactly what uh, Edo wants to do. Oh, Armageddon! This is the play I talked about in the deck tech. This is kind of what you're hoping for. And unfortunately, there's a lightning bolt on the War Mammoth. Or else it would have been perfect. And there's some more direct damage as well. Wow, look at this. Look at the damage that Erwin is doing to Edo here. Dropping all the way to four. But look at that. Look at the board states. Both players have nothing left on the board. But Edo has a full grip of cards. And we see a quick City of Brass here. And it's hard to see that land with all the glare. Unfortunately, uh, oh, it's a Pendlehaven we can see now. And Erwin taking a damage, playing a Chaos Orb. Will we see a Disenchant on the Chaos Orb? No, we see a Sylvan instead. I wonder if he's going to flip on the Sylvan or on the Pendlehaven. Because, I mean, of course Sylvan is strong, but he cannot use it anymore to draw extra cards. He's only on three. Erwin only needs a Lightning Bolt. First, let's see this flip. Is he gonna? Is he gonna hit it? And yes, he is. And that means City of Brass is gone. Interesting choice to go for the city because he's only on three life. And I believe he wants to play a Crumble as a disenchant. Unfortunately, Crumble is not that good. He cannot target the Sylvan. So a little bit of a misplay here by Erwin. He's playing, he's pointing at the beer. Saying, it's the beer. It's not me. Well, Erwin, this is the first round. Anyway, he's on nine, and there we see Edo casting a lot of our elves. And with that Pendlehaven, that's actually a pretty good attacker. He can make it 2-3. There's Erwin taking a damage with a Surrender per Freaks. Ay, 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 ay. And Edo needs to find an answer now. He's only on 3 life. Oh, man. He's going to go to 2, and he's found it. He's found the Swords to Plowsiers. This is an exciting round 1 first game. Attacking here and dealing 4 damage, and that means that Erwin's going to drop down to 7, I believe. And he's passing turn. Interesting here. I think maybe I would have chosen just to go with the Pendlehaven. Ooh, interesting. The Urnum, again, a creature that Edo has to take care of. But at least he can block it as well one turn with his... Oh, he's attacking, actually. This is interesting. He's attacking. Pumping it up to 2-3. And dealing 5 damage here. Oh, he declared blockers. Okay, so he declared blockers on the Urnum Jin, And then he pumped it up with the Pendlehaven. And then played the Giant Grove. And is Edo actually going to pull this off? Is he going to win this first game? 
They haven't just passed turn, so I mean, he can definitely deal two damage with the Pendlehaven. Remember, he's on one life. I would put that City of Brass away, Edo. If you use that City of Brass only once, you're dead. Please put it away. Using Pendlehaven, dealing two damage as expected. Erwin is dropping to four measly life here. Nah, this ain't great. That's, I, I think that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, oh, but Edo, kudos, man. You were almost there. And, you know, very interesting here to see. Uh, like, like you were so close, Edo, but just Erwin has that direct damage. I mean, I, I, I think that's going to pull through for him in a lot of matches that he's going to play today. Anyway, let's let these players sideboard and we'll catch back up to them in game number two. Game number two here is about to begin. And uh, let's take a look. I think it's Edo who's going to be on the play since he lost, so he gets to choose. Not quite sure, still shuffling up. Maybe he took a mulligan. We'll just have to see. Looking at his cards, if he puts a card on the bottom, we know he took a mulligan. And that's exactly what he did. So that's a bit unfortunate. Very cool playmat from uh, Edo, by the way. Starting with a Mishra's Factory. It's a bit hard to see with the glare. And look at that great start for Erwin. Kurt Ape. Ooh, he's not done yet. Mox Sapphire. Soul Ring. Oh my, does he want to dump his entire hand in one turn? Black Lotus, cracking the Lotus. Oh, wow. Serendip Afrit. Oh, of course. Yeah, Chaos Orb. Of course, cheers, Ervin. And that means, how many cards does he have in hand? One card in hand, I think? Yeah, he played out six. Two cards in hand, probably, because he was on the draw. Right? Uh, anyway. This is crazy. Oh, of course, he cracked the Lotus. Yeah, yeah, so he's got one card left. This is crazy. Look at this. Um, attacking with both here. Interesting because the Kurt Ape is still a 1-1. One -one. Uh, he's activating the factory. I'm expecting... Yeah, there's a crumble. I was expecting something. So that means he's dropping to 16. And I mean, Edo, I know we just started, but these are these explosive starts that you can see in old school magic, especially when you're playing against a powered player. And I think... Well, actually, Edo's playing with power as well, so they're both powered players. But, I mean, you know what I mean. I think this is sometimes what happens. It's really nice in, in Magic that you can have these explosive first turns. But the downside is we're not really going to see much of a game, I think. I think, uh, Edo, if you can still win this one, it's a miracle. I guess the best card you can draw now is Balance. Land and then into Balance. Is that your best option? There is a Regrowth. Taking, oh man, this is brutal. Regrowth Chaos or flipping on his land, losing his other land as well. I mean, well done, Ervin, but this is brutal for Edo. Look at that. No permanence on the board, not even lands. Taking hit after hit, dropping to five life, I believe. And there's a disintegrate. That's it. <laughs> oh, wow. This is, I mean, I'm not going to say it's the fastest match that we've had on the channel, but you know what? Maybe it is. Maybe it's the fastest game we've had on the channel. So not a whole match, but game. Just this one game. How long did, did this take? 10 seconds? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this first match from the Raging Bull series. This was round one. If you enjoyed Tournament Magic, um, you know, please check in next week because uh, then we'll have round number two, a round number two match uh, for you from the live stream. Um, for now, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more old school magic, uh, you know, check out the channel. We've got more than 200 videos related to old school magic. Many of those are just nice games like this one. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do so as well by clicking um, on that like button. Uh, leaving a comment also helps. Subscribing if you're not a subscriber yet. Um, what else? Oh yeah, you can also support us on Patreon because we have a Patreon page. You can become a patron of the channel and support Timmy Talk, support me to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm planning on doing much more uh, live match reports as well, but I really need help to do that. So all the help is appreciated. Click on that link, go to the Patreon page, check out what you can do. I already have a lot of patrons that I'm very, very thankful for. Talking about them, let's go to the end scroll. Let's check out the patrons of Timmy Talks.
Petrus, think it is Sumba Kazi. 